Do you have an iPad and also have some sort of other Mac OS device? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can actually use your iPad as a second screen for your Mac OS device. It's a great additional tool and just another way you can have your devices work together and always have a second screen with you kind of while you're on the go. This video is going to deal with two separate ways of being able to use your iPad as a second screen. The first is using an Apple built-in feature called Sidecar. The second, which gives you a few different advantages, is using an app called Duet Display. Before we dig in, take just a quick second and hit that subscribe button below so you can stay up to date with all my latest video tutorials. Otherwise, let's jump in and show you how to use Duet Display and Sidecar. Sidecar is a more recent feature that's been introduced to Mac OS and it's really, really easy to enable it and overall it works very, very well. You don't even need to be connected directly from your iPad to your Mac. You can do this wirelessly. The only fault I've found with it is if you're having video display on the iPad through this method, it sometimes works a little bit clunky. The only time I found it doesn't work too, too well is when you're putting some sort of video based screen on that iPad. Then it gets a little clunky, but that's where Duet Display will come in handy. In order to get to Sidecar, the first step is you have to be logged in on your Mac OS device and your iPad with your Apple ID. To access Sidecar, you want to click on the Apple logo icon on the top left of your screen, and you want to go to your System Preferences. If you are not logged in with your Apple ID, and to know if you're logged in with your Apple ID, you'll see right here that it actually says that I am logged in and iCloud is enabled. If it isn't, click on Apple ID and go ahead and log in with your account. And make sure it's the same account that's logged in on your iPad. If those are different accounts or one isn't logged in, this feature will not work. And if one of your devices isn't logged in, once you log in on it, it may take a little while for the sidecar feature to enable. Some people I've seen it just takes a few minutes. Some you might have to wait 20 minutes or so for it to show up. So now we're going to assume that we're all logged in and ready to go. And you'll see down on the bottom here, you'll see the sidecar icon. Click on that. From here, you have a couple options. You can show the sidebar, you can show the touch bar, and you can tell it where you want those things to show up. You can also enable double tap on the Apple Pencil. But when you're ready to use your iPad as a second screen, you're going to click on the Select Device drop-down and you'll see your iPad listed. Just click on it. What's going to happen is you're going to see your screen kick over like you just saw my screen do. And now it is using my iPad as a secondary display. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you right now, you can see my mouse moving around. This is on my main monitor display. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it over and show you my iPad screen. So if I take my mouse off the left side of the screen, you're going to now see my mouse moving around, and this is actually on my iPad screen. And I can click on that and move that little system preferences around. And then if I want it to go back on my main screen, I just drag it off my screen, and it comes back over. And you'll see if I switch back to my main display, there's the system preferences. And this is actually my desktop screen. So you can actually work back and forth, drag things over, and work on both screens together. So Sidecar defaults to being on the left side, so it's like pretending that your iPad is on the left side of your screen. So anything you drag over to it, you want to drag off the left side of your screen. So let's say I want to get the System Preferences Sidecar settings back over to my iPad. I'm going to click so I can move it around, and I'm just going to drag it right off the left side of my screen. And what you're going to see on your iPad screen is that that window is now on it. And again, I'm going to switch back to it. And now this is my iPad screen, and you can see it right there. And the really nice thing is you just noticed I closed it out. If you have an Apple Pencil, you can use that as a mouse click. Your finger will work if you're trying to scroll but you can actually use your Apple Pencil as the actual mouse clicking device. So it's kind of hands-free, but I can also use my mouse on the screen. So see, I'll open up my OneDrive folder. I'm using my mouse on my iPad screen. Let's say I want this Documents window to be on my desktop. I'm going to drag it back to the right because I want to move it back to my desktop. And then let's say I want to put it back on my iPad screen. I drag it back over and there it goes. Now let's say you have your iPad sitting on the right hand side of your monitor. It's going to feel a little weird dragging things to the left to get them over to your iPad. If you go up to your system preferences, 
you're going to see an icon that says displays. If you tap on that, you're going to see a tab while you were in the process of having your iPad as a second screen that says Arrangement. Tap on that, and you're going to see a littler screen and your big screen. The bigger screen is your main device. It's your MacBook or your Mac Mini or your iMac, any of those devices. The smaller one is your iPad screen. And if I want it to act on the right, I just click and drag it to the right. And now when I move my mouse to the left-hand side of my iPad, it will move on to my main screen. And when I go off of my main screen, it'll go back to my iPad. So you can have it set up where the iPad sits to the right of your monitor. And to move stuff to it, you move it off to the right or off to the left to get it back. Or if it sits off the left side, you can arrange those either way just by clicking and dragging. So right now my iPad is on the left, so I'm going to move that little window back to the left. You're going to see everything blink, and then it's set up that way. When you're all done using Sidecar, you go back to that Sidecar setting, and you're going to click on the Disconnect. And boom, it is instantly stopped, and you now just have separate displays. Now, Sidecar works wonderfully, and the really nice thing about it is you don't actually have to have a cable attaching your iPad to your Mac device. It works wirelessly. The one feature it lacks that I have noticed is when there is video being displayed on your iPad when you're using it as a second screen. For example, when I'm doing a Zoom call, I like to have the window that shows everybody in the Zoom call over on my iPad. For my setup, it just works really easy. I found there was a lot of stuttering, a lot of lag, things like that. So there is another app that's been around for a long, long time called Duet Display. They have an iOS app that costs 10 bucks. It's a one-time purchase, so you want to pick that up on your iPad. And you'll see it's listed right here, so this is actually what it looks like. They also have it for iPhone also. A little trickier probably using your iPhone, but hey, with how big the screens are getting, who knows, you might want to use it that way. But it is there. It does work for iPhone and iPad. I have Duet Display installed on my iPad, and again, it costs 10 bucks. Then you actually want to go to the Duet website. The Duet website is duetdisplay.com. And the really neat thing is it works for Windows and Mac OS. So you could actually use your iPad as a secondary screen on your Windows device or your Mac OS device. The download from here is completely free. So it is just the main app that actually costs money on your iOS device. So you just click on Mac OS to download it or Windows if you're on Windows and you download it and you install it. And once you install it, you'll see up across the top here I've got a little D in a circle. That means it's installed and ready to go. I do want to show really quickly that they do have a couple other features. They have what's called Duet Air, which allows you to do it wirelessly, just like Sidecar does. Now if I scroll all the way to the bottom again, there's another one called Pro. Duet Pro just has a few more features, a little more powerful. If it's something you really want to dig in on, I would give it a try and see what features it has. But if you just want to use it simply as a second screen for your Mac device or your Windows device, I would just pick up the base Duet display. So once it's downloaded and installed, I'm going to go ahead and close out of my browser window. What you need to do is you need to go on your iPad. Now on your iPad screen, you want to open up the Duet display app. So once you go into the Duet app, if you have just the basic Duet app, you have to physically connect your iPad to your MacBook. But as soon as you do that, the app picks it up, sees it's there, and starts using your iPad screen as a second screen for your MacBook. I find when you're showing video or having video over on your iPad screen, when you're using it as a second screen, it works way better. There is zero lag. I have yet to try the Air or the Pro version, so I would definitely check those out if wireless is something you're interested in. I'm not sure if the video works any better when you're having it over on those screens, but if it's something you really want to dig in, I would definitely, definitely check it out. Once you get it going, it works exactly the same as Sidecar. So your two best options I've found is using Sidecar, which that one's free and works really, really well, and Duet Display. Also the same, but does cost 10 bucks, which can go up to 30 bucks. The $10 one is just a one-time purchase. The other two, there's a yearly cost to those. If it's something you use all the time, I would definitely jump in on it. I'll probably check out the pro version at some point because it is something I do use fairly frequently. But once you're in the app and actually have them mirroring with each other, 
it works really well and they all work exactly the same. It's just click and drag things off of the screen over to your iPad screen and vice versa. I hope you found this video helpful. It's a really handy feature if you have an iPad and a Mac OS device being able to actually use your iPad as a secondary screen. It's a really handy feature, not something I use all the time, but when I'm doing Zoom calls with my students or in some other type of meeting, it's really handy to have the people displayed on my iPad for me or the information on my iPad so I can use both screens together. Really, really nice feature. So the two apps I would look at is the built-in one called Sidecar. Again, you have to be signed in with your Apple ID on both devices for it to work, but it works really, really well. Or you can look into an app called Duet Display, and they have three different tiers of plans depending on which one you want to go with. The base one, which just simply makes your iPad act as a second screen, just costs one-time payment of 10 bucks. Not too bad. But they do have the other two tiers that do get a little more expensive. But again, if it's something you use all the time, to me, it's worth paying for it if it's that good. And I love Duet Display, and they've been in the game for a long, long time. They're also trying to compete with Apple Sidecar. So they're going to be always adding new features to kind of try to one-up that Apple feature. So if it's something you use all the time, I would strongly suggest checking out Sidecar. As always, if you have any questions, please, please leave a comment below. I do check those and respond to them. So if you have any specific questions on how to use Sidecar or Duet Display or have any issues with them, please leave it below and I will respond to those comments. Also, while you're down there, hit that like button. And also while you're down there, please help support my channel and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all my latest tutorials. I do try to release one to two tutorials a week, so this will help you stay in the loop when I have a new one that comes out. Otherwise, this is Adam on Tech, signing off.